screen. So you are able to see my screen. So today uh, we are able to discuss this uh, topics. These are the agenda which we are covering this entire uh, uh, class. So characteristics of uh, algorithm design, algorithm design uh, paradigm, types of algorithms, pointers, linked list, types of linked list, and uh, inserting inside linked list and deleting. So these are the kind of things which we will be uh, discussing uh, on our uh, entire class. So uh, what we can do now first uh, before getting into uh, all this kind of things, we can start with uh, the very uh, basic things. Like uh, whenever we are going to any problem solving or like solving a particular task, there are two differences or there are two divisions. You are able to view it on my screen. One is data structures. So in order to solve a problem or in order to solve a task, the very first thing is data structures. What is data structures is the efficient mechanism to store, manage, and retrieve the data which is important to solve a problem. So now in order to solve a particular problem or a task, so at a least amount of time, at a least amount of memory, and even at a higher scalability, in order to achieve these three things, what we try to do is, the very first step is we need to have a data structures. What exactly data structures speak about is how well we are trying to store, manage, and retrieve the data. That is something very important. And based on the data structures, that is the first point. And the second algorithm purpose is efficient algorithm, which is a finite set of instructions to solve the problem. So now the first data structures is dealing about how well we are able to store manage our data. And when it comes to algorithm, they are the set of means finite steps in order to solve a particular problem, we are going with an algorithm. So now what we will be doing all these classes. Now, if you look on to the lecture one, lecture two, we discussed about what is data structures and algorithms. So now uh, we had a basic understanding about it. So now uh, from today, what we will be doing is we are jumping into before going into different types of algorithms which are there in DSA, what we are trying to do is first we are trying to learn about data structures. So how we are able to store, how we are able to manage, how we are able to retrieve the data in that what are the different types we have it. We will be learning all these different types of data structures for a couple of uh, lectures. And once we got a very good decent knowledge on data structures, different types of data structures, then we will be uh, going deep into different types of algorithms. So that's what we are planning for this entire class. So today, as part of data structures, we will be learning about linked list, again in the types of linked list, and again we will be learning about uh, this one, how we are inserting, how we are deleting, or how we are removing all this kind of thing, we will be learning within the data structures, which is linked list. Now, let me uh, get into Al characteristics of algorithm. Whenever you are saying, hey, I designed a very good algorithm. So what are the characteristics? How can you say your algorithm is so good as your algorithm need to task or it need to solve a specific problem. So it need to be as specific as possible. And uh, you need to define your algorithm. Each and every instruction need to be properly defined. So by giving more instructions or by giving less instructions, you are unable to solve a specific problem. That's the reason your instructions which you are giving it need to be properly defined. And there should not be any ambiguous instructions. So there should not be uneven or uh, not required or uh, waste instructions are pretty uh, waste of time in lines of your algorithm design. And all the instructions of the algorithm should be executable in a finite amount of time and in a finite number of steps and it should have a clear input and output to solve the problem and each instruction of the algorithm should be important in solving the given problem. So I think more or less like all the people going to follow this uh, characteristics that may not be a big deal. Uh, why in the sense uh, while you are means like every time setting this uh, uh, what is that instructions or setting this characteristics and designing an algorithm uh, is just like would be a difficult thing. So while you are practicing more and more algorithm you get used to this uh, characteristic of algorithm and while you are learning data structures and algorithm may be or whatever you are learning if you are learning SQL if you are learning a new programming language or if you are learning anything 
the very first uh, few days or few months you struggle to learn the topic you struggle to understand the topics so once you are able to spend more and more time your brain moves towards a mode called as autopilot mode automatically it gets into autopilot mode autopilot mode in sense you no need to spend more time automatically you are able to understand the topic you no need to spend more time you are able to automatically write a very good programs big big programs you can write it but what it cost in order to make your brain towards an autopilot mode is the lot of time which you are spending so if you are spending less time every time you find these challenges so whatever the characteristics you have you can just note them down while we are doing algorithms in the future you will be uh, learning about them even more in depth and in detail so apart from this uh, characteristics so we as we said as we discussed there are different uh, types of algorithm designs so which are like divide and conquer algorithm so what is the purpose of a divide and uh, conquer algorithm here you can uh, see th these are the three different types of algorithms divide and conquer algorithm greedy algorithm and you are dynamic programming so what exactly your divide and conquer algorithm going to do is the basic ideology behind di divide and conquer is the divide and conquer algorithms so breaks down a particular uh, problem into very here simple sub problems so now how you are trying to solve it whatever the big problem you have it you are trying to split it into various sub problems we already discussed this divide and conquer in lecture 2 so now in that you have different types of it which is like binary search or merge sort or quick sort or uh, karata uh, karata suba algorithm for uh, fast multiplication uh, and again uh, strassen uh, multi matrix multiplication these are all the different types of divide and conquer algorithm in the similar way you have have another type of algorithm which is greedy algorithm the purpose of greedy algorithm is in order to perform various optimization and uh, combinatorial uh, problems means like in order to identify a best optimum solution you are able to get into this greedy algorithms again in that you have different uh, types of algorithms which you are able to identify it means like i want to identify the shortest route or i want to identify uh, the best possible route in order to get the highest target for my particular product so for this kind of task yes you are able to knock the door of your greedy algorithm and in the similar way you have uh, dynamic programming so the purpose of uh, dynamic programming is like uh, when you are having a sub problems and if the sub problems are overlapping yes you are able to knock the door of your dynamic programming so what exactly your dynamic programming going to do is like it is able to compare the subsequent uh, it is able to compare the uh, sub level of uh, uh, results and based on that which one is giving the best results it is trying to choose that so that is one of the best thing which we can go with your uh, dynamic programming and when it comes to dynamic programming the performance wise dynamic programming is able to perform well when compared to your uh, divide and conquer we can't say like every time dynamic programming is doing the best when compared to divide and conquer not exactly so uh, for few problems for few use cases yes uh, your uh, dynamic programming going to work well when compared to your uh, divide and conquer you can have a look over a small example here so now what exactly uh, the small example here is there are three different matrices p q and r these are the three, three different types of matrices which we have it and uh, this three different matrices are having a different matrix size for example your p is having a matrix size of 30 your q is having a matrix size of 40 and your r is having a matrix size of 50 let's imagine so the multiplication between uh, p and q so you can see this equation p q r is equal to p q r if you are able to look on to this so the number of multiplications we take in order to go with pq and r is different from p and qr so now if you are able to test it you are able to understand this i think uh, when we are discussing dynamic programming i'll be giving this examples so there you are able to understand so we have three different types of algorithm designs divide and conquer greedy algorithms and your dynamic algorithms whenever you are going into divide and conquer you are going with same taking a problem splitting into sub problems and there is no overlap in the sub problems we go with divide and conquer and if there is a overlap in our sub problems we are going with dynamic 
programming and you can see intermediate results are cached and can be used in subsequent operations and allow us to compare results at different stages so that is one of the benefits so now rather than explaining like this when we go in depth into uh, the theory then you are able to understand uh, better about the this one dynamic programming i'm not going deep into algorithms as such right now after completion of data structures and uh, then we get into our uh, algorithms there i go deep into each and every example and we will be discussing it now let's discuss about our uh, linked list so what is the difference between uh, list and a linked list so now let me take uh, the very simple example what is the actual difference between a list and a linked list let me just show you over my screen Yeah, you can see my screen now. Here, there are three different type of list. List A, B, and C. So, the name itself says linked list. What exactly linked list is like uh, the connection between one list to the another list. So, we can say it as a linked list. So, now in order to understand about a linked list, we need to understand about a pointer. So, what is a pointer? Basically, we don't discuss anything about a pointers as such in Python. Mostly, we discuss about pointers in uh, C programming basically and uh, even in Pascal and all this, we try to learn more about pointers. So, what actually is a pointer is, for example, let me take uh, a very simple example. Now, I own my car and I want to sell my car. So, in order to sell my car, what I will be doing, I may not be uh, taking my car to all the people, hey man, this is the car which I want to sell it. I don't want to do every time. Why in the sense it is difficult every time to drive my car, to take it to all the people, to showcase it and to, uh, in order to make it to sell, it's a difficult task, it consumes a lot of time. So, rather than doing it, what I will be doing is, I will be parking my car in my parking lot and I just uh, try to take an image. And by taking an image, I will be showcasing this image. I will be sending it to my friend. So that I will be saying, hey man, this is the car which I am trying to sell. So this particular image is pointed to my address. So where this car is located, it is pointed to my address. So now in the similar way, now for example, I want to sell uh, a particular, uh, we can say the same, like the same car itself, you are pointed to this location. In the similar way, now it's not only through WhatsApp, I want to send it or I want to use it, the same image, I want to post it in OLX. I will be posting it in OLX, again with the same image, where exactly it is pointed, it is pointed to this particular address, to this particular person. So in the similar way what is exactly pointers in lines of python or in lines of any programming is now every data is stored into a specific memory so you don't want to call that uh, memory every time you don't want to shift that memory every time so what you will be doing every time it is located at a particular position or a particular memory you call it using a variable so whenever you are calling the specific variable a it is pointed to that memory position so in the similar way what you are trying to do with pointers is so wherever maybe the data is located in your particular python memory so you are pointing to that and you are accessing it that's where you are learning about the concepts of your pointers now uh, whenever you are going into these pointers you can arrange this data so uh, when you are getting into a linked list kind of thing a list is basically the data is arranged in a basic what exactly we can say in a one dimensional uh, format where exactly all the data points are arranged one by side by side we can say that you all are aware of a list where exactly 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 4 comma 5 comma 6 comma 7 so now when you are having all this kind of values in this way now what exactly a linked list is for example there are two different str strings for example data is a string and another string is called as structure these are two different strings which we have it now data is separate structure is separate these are the two different uh, variables or the strings which we have it now there is no link between data and structure means there is no relationship means for example when i'm calling data there is no connection towards where the structure is located or in a very simple note there is point a and point b so whenever you are calling point b it don't this point a don't have any information about where this point b is located 
so that is called as there is no link between these two particular values but if there is a relationship between point a and point b so where this for example if i call a so this a going to contain the information even about the point b where exactly it is located that is called as a link so this link is constructed using the pointers in the similar way whenever you are going with uh, this one what i can say with uh, the example of the car now for example, the image of this car is having a connection. This car is available at this location. That is your pointer. So now this image of the car is located at this address. In order to buy it, you want to travel to that address and you want to buy it. So that's what you are doing. So you no need to take the car every time. Just you can connect a pointer. So you can just showcase or access anything with this pointer. So it calls that particular memory. So in a linked list, linked list contains the information or the memory about the address of another variable or the address of the another value that is the purpose of a linked list now you are able to see this a b c there are three different values so now here i am splitting this into two dimensions initially so first data so let us go with data so now what is the data i want to store the data as like 20 and here what is the data available in b i want to store it as 30 and what is the data you are going and storing at c it is 40 40 so now whenever you are printing a it is able to print only the data which is like 20 so whenever you are printing b it is only printing 30 whenever you are calling c it is only printing your 40 which is when you, you print c you are able to call only 40 now what is a linked list so whenever you are able to call a it is giving 20 whenever you call b it is giving b so 30 whenever you call c it is giving 40 it is just a list what is a linked list is now in this particular thing you are having one more division we call it as next We call it as next. So now what you are doing, whenever you are printing A, it is able to contain the information of its own data 20 and it is also containing the address of another variable or another value which is called as b so in the similar way whenever you are calling b it is able to contain the value of 30 as well as it contains the address of your variable c so in the similar way after c we don't have any particular value so you are storing this so i'm saying hey man after c there is no connection there is no link so i want to end this list i want to stop this list so you are giving this value as none means whenever you say none you are stopping that particular linking so now we call it as a linked list so what exactly linked list is this particular value a is containing the information of its own data as well as it contains the information of another value or a particular variable so we call it as a linked list so now we call it as single linked list so only single connection you have it so this particular value is comprises of the data and the address to the next particular value that's what we are able to call it as a single then what is called as double linked list so what is a double linked list is we are writing another one called as previous so whenever i'm calling c it is able to go even in a reverse direction so from the previous to this previous from this even to this particular what exactly another previous so now after this it is none now whenever you call 40 it is able to have an information even about 30 and whenever you call 30 it is also having an address of 20 so in this way you are having the previous we call it as a double linked list so in the uh, we, we discussed about different types of linked list single linked list and double linked list in a single linked list you have the connection of a current value to the next and whenever you are going to the double linked list you have the information from current to the next as well as from the current to the previous as well both the situations we have it which is a double linked list then what is a circular list or a circular link linked list i can say it as i'm going with another color for difference you are able to get this information up to none so from here 
again the cycle it is not stopping at none it is again rotating again to point a so this is called as your circular linked list so if you are having this kind of loop kind of thing we are calling it as circular linked list so these are the different types of list we have it so we discussed about um, again now what is that single linked list we discussed about double we discussed about circular and in every linked list we have this commands whenever you say list you have this commands so now we know the stack operations in order to add a new value into a particular list we use a push command so in order to send a add uh, value outside you use pop command and not only that when you have a append command people who learned about uh, basic list commands tuple commands set commands dictionary commands you also aware of so that append command whenever you want to add a value you can add it or you want to add a value between two values you can do all this operation so in the similar way every linked list going to have append operation you can add the values you can insert the values you can delete the values so within the single linked list or a double linked list or even in a circular linked list you can perform this operations so now let's have a look let's have an example about uh, the single single linked list and a double linked list using our programming let's have a look over it so now you are able to view my screen so here in this uh, particular you are able to view my screen so in this screen you are able to see i defined a node and uh, in this particular node so i created uh, the class for this particular class called as node so i initiated two different data points so one is data in order to store its own value and in order to store the information of another one we i created another one called as self dot next so if you are going with a double linked list you need to have three so self dot data self dot next and self dot previous so these are the three things we going to have it now i said next equal to none means like i am not giving any such connections here it is none equal next equal to none so now you can see here n1 equal to node i'm just uh, creating one particular value called data i'm stored it into n1 in the similar way node of structures again i'm storing another value into a, into uh, n2 into object n2 and again node of algorithms again i stored uh, another object into n3 so whenever i click n3 dot data it is able to give me algorithms whenever i give uh, n1 dot data it is able to give me structures whenever i give uh, n uh, n2 dot uh, data it going to all this we are able to get it and apart from this again when i hit n1 dot next it is able to give me none so why it is giving me n1 dot next equal to none in the sense i haven't uh, stored any anything i haven't gave any connection so it is giving me as none so what i have done here is so i just said n1 dot next equal to n2 so i gave a connection for n1 to the n2 so i gave the address i stored the n address of n2 in my n1 at a position n1 dot next equal to n2 so by giving it n1 dot next equal to it is able to say it is the object position you got it and now i just want to print the positions my current position is n1 while current current dot data and current equal to current dot next so in this way when i am giving the connection so it is able to print me the two positions data and the structures it gave me but it is not printing me algorithms so now again i stored n2 dot next equal to n3 i gave the connection from n2 to n3 i Uh, i stored the address of n3 in my n2 after accessing structures i going to access even the algorithms when i'm executing again this while loop it is able to again print data structures and algorithm all the three things are executed in the similar way what i have done here is now i created a uh, single uh, linked list rather than doing in that manual process i just want to place everything here in the code so the same i created uh, the class of node again inside the single linked list you will be having the data and you will be having the address for next i defined it and uh, again self dot head equal to none and uh, here the same whatever i done in the above the same thing i have done here in a single line so i am able to see this again data structures and algorithm and when you are going into this double linked list you are able to see this now i created three things now one is data next and another one previous so now when you are able to see all this uh, syntax and when you are able to look on to this previous so you are able to uh, 
Now you are able to uh, see my screen here. When you are able to look on to the double linked list, so I pushed data, I pushed structures, I pushed and and even I pushed algorithms. If you are able to look on to the data, like I got this double linked list by using this entire, uh, uh, what is that data structure which I have written. So now you can just explore it whenever you have some time. So I'll be just sharing this uh, data in the link. You can check it in the description. So first I'm pushing data into my double linked list and after that structures and after that and and after that algorithms. All this I'm using push command and whenever I print list, list dot head it is you are able to see it is able to print me two operations forward direction algorithms so now it is uh, for when we are pushing first what we are pushing data next structures next examples and algorithms in this way we got it. data structures examples and algorithms we got it so let me again re-execute it when I executed first I pushed uh, what is the first thing I pushed uh, it is going in this direction. Yeah, first I pushed the data and next is structures and next is and and the last is algorithms. So data first, structures and algorithms. So now we have the sequence of from every uh, position we have the next position as well as we have the previous position so now from the reverse direction so data structures and algorithms even in the reverse direction so if you want it you can add this commands as well if you want i can add examples i want to append it so whenever you use the append command every time append going to add it in the last position so that's what your append is doing i don't want to do any append or i just want to perform some sort of inserting between the particular list you can do it with respect to inserting as well so in this way what i'm doing i created single linked list as well as a double linked list so you can just break on what you break down what we are doing at uh, each and every line so you can understand it so uh, whatever so in order to understand this code try you need to have a basics of oops concept without a oops concept you can't understand it so try to get some oops concept knowledge and then uh, go and work on it and um, you can do a small task so here we discussed in the script i provided with a single linked list double linked list even i went through inserting the values appending it and even we are pushing it so now we haven't discussed about deleting the values within a list so now even modifying the values so try to work on this kind of uh, few things as an assignment so while we are getting into the next class you can practice it and you can uh, if possible you can send it to my email id as well i'll be pinging my email id you can send it to my email id where uh, i can validate your assignments i can check your work and i can give you corrections personally over the email so you can work on this linked list it's a very basic and simple uh, list very exactly you, you, if you see you are able to understand the basic connections all this code is written based on the concept of the theory we discussed just now so the connections which we are building between next and previous just understand the diagram based on the diagram try to link the code you are able to understand it so thank you so much see you on our next uh, lecture 4 thank you